I'm just really glad that I got to follow the last guy, the previous presenter. I would like to focus on one aspect of all those smart technologies that he's talking about, and that is the language aspect. So linguistics. When I say linguistics, what comes to mind? Something about something vague about languages. Um, some you know maybe we study Greek in our free time or something. You know, no confessions here, but um, I'm I'm, I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. So I've been in it for a while. Like they said, I'm doing my master's here at EMU, and I did a bachelor's in it. So six years now in this field, just a short time relative to some other academics. But I've already seen this disturbing trend. Uh, that happens. This scenario will play out over and over. And let me just describe it to you. So I'm at like, you know, an amazing party or a social gathering or just sitting on my couch and I'm meeting someone new. <laughs> someone just walked in my door and they're like, hey, and you, you do little small talk, right? And what's that one question that everyone has to ask, right? What do you do? So I have to tell them. I say, oh, I'm a graduate student. And then they say, oh, what are you studying? And I say, I study linguistics. Now, stop right there. In my six years of studying linguistics, I can tell you with absolute certainty, you know, like 100% p-value zero, like just 100% <laughs> that there are only two answer, there are only two follow-up questions that people ever ask after you tell them that you study linguistics. The first one is very nice, but it's, you know, unfortunately it's really misinformed. It's the, how many languages do you speak? And let me just tell you, never ask a linguistics major how many languages you speak, because it's a little bit like asking a doctor, how many diseases do you have? <laughs> the second question is absolutely the same. If you have to take one thing away from it, it's that. Yeah, don't ask a So the second question, the second question is, um, you know, it's just the bane of every liberal arts major you know, in, the li in their life, and it's, what are you going to do with that? There's usually, there's usually a facial expression, too. What are you going to do with that? So, I'm going to tell you, friend, but before I do that, <laughs> before I do that, um, let me tell you a little bit about what linguistics is. So, linguistics is the scientific study of language. We study about languages. We take language, human language, as our object of scientific inquiry, and we dissect it, just as a biologist would dissect a frog and see what the insides look like, just like a botanist would look at flowers in Zimbabwe and see how they grow in the spring. You know, you know, just like that, we study that with languages. We see what's common, what's rare, what is illegal, what is impossible in languages. There's some things you know, that you just cannot do. Uh, what is, yeah, all these things. And we try to find the universal properties of human language. So how does one do linguistics? Well, there's two sides to it. Um, one is that there's a lot of abstract theorizing. To, so in order to account for all the data that we have, uh, there has to be a lot of theory. And it's really fun because you'll go to a conference after you take your Ling 101 and you're all enthusiastic about it. And then you'll hear that people came up with 12 different theories over the course of the day. They just invented a new one while they're in the bathroom. And they're just theories all over the place and we're tripping over them in linguistics. And, and that's kind of fun, actually, because we don't have to, we have a standard model. It's actually called standard model. So, you know, it's the same thing. <laughs> And so there's that side, the abstract side. And then there's also the side that we would be more familiar with, which is a little bit more like the hard sciences, like uh, physics and chemistry. Just like I said, we study language and we try to see what's common and we make falsifiable hypotheses, we do statistics, we do all that, at, that sort of fun stuff. So that's doing linguistics. Um, okay, so I get through my spiel, you know, at the party, and then my friend looks at me and he says, okay, so what are you going to do with that? And I'm going to tell you that you can do a whole lot with it. So language technology, uh, the previous pre presenter, he, he gave a great summary of all the stuff that's just around us. It's just so amazing about technology. And there's a lot of language technology out there. And so let me just take you back, um, you know, just to illustrate how far we've come and all that. Let's, let's go back to like the 80s or the 90s, or maybe you know, the younger you know, people who've seen this in movies, like in you know, movies that were just from 90s and stuff. And we laugh because we see these people and they take out these phones that are like 50 pounds and they're Nokia bricks and they have like the antenna that's, a, that's like hello and stuff. And then so what they do is they, they text people when, when there was texting. 
uh, they text people using the T9 system with the nine keys and stuff. Oh, it's just awful. And uh, like, who, who, can, who can forget these, these, you know, we've run into them nowadays, but when you call your bank, the automatic lady that comes on the other line, oh, we hate this, because you call and you're, you just want to talk to a person, right? But then it says, please say the last 50 digits of your bank account number. And you just start crying because it's never going to work. You're never going to get to anyone. And you start saying, yeah, yes, five, six, seven, eight, eight. You, you try to move to the next menu. Yes, 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 yes. No, 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 no. No, quiero hablar español. So you just get really frustrated with it. And we're we, it's so good that we don't have to deal with that now because we have these little devices in our pocket that you can click a button and say, hey, where's the next Italian restaurant? And it will tell you back in a sassy voice, the next Italian restaurant is over there. <laughs> That's amazing. The idea, of, oops, the idea of asking a computer a question and getting an answer is a revolutionary leap in technology. And... There were, there were, there's chatbots that were, you know, from the 90s that kind of mimic conversation and stuff like that. But one of the best examples of this is Watson. Some of you may be familiar. Um, in 2011, IBM came out with this computer system that competed on Jeopardy against humans. And so Watson was interesting because actually not a lot of people were that impressed if you don't come from a programming background. Because we said, um, what? So you put, you pitted a computer against a human, the computer has access to the entire Wikipedia, a bunch of knowledge, databases, and everything. So it's not even fair, like, for the human. Why should, you know, what is the big deal? Well, the big deal was that humans had a huge advantage. Humans had the ability to process natural language. Um, Watson still crushed the humans, but that's besides the point. So <laughs> humans, the humans had the ability to process natural language. And Watson, at its debut at least, did not have a sophisticated enough speech processing module to understand Alex Trebek. So you could go up to it and say, like, how are you? And it wouldn't, it wouldn't even know how to respond at that moment. Um, so speech processing is a whole other can of worms. What you're asking the computer to do, if you think about it, just for you know, a really basic workflow, you're asking a computer to take a stream of sound, a continuous stream of sound that sounds like this, chunk it into words, you know, assign meaning to it, and then do something with it. It's incredible. And yet we have it on our phones. So Siri, or I mean, I know this, yeah, my other phone is an Android, so it's okay, don't worry. So Siri, but I'm gonna talk about that. Siri really popularized, or at least made mainstream, the idea that you could talk to your computer um, and just say, hey, yeah, where's the nearest restaurant? Or, and it will talk back to you. So again, this Q&A interaction is just remarkable. And so Siri, what it represents to us as language technologists, or technicians, I don't even know, linguists, let me just say that. So what it represents to us, Siri, represents the transition from talking to a machine like it's a machine to talking to a machine like it's a human. So, um, I mean, gone are the days of, say, a command where you would have these old phones again. And, you know, it's been around for a while. We've always had it. You can try it, but it, you know, it, it usually goes something like this. You'll click the button, and it'll say, say a command. And you go, call Zachary Smith. <laughs> Calling your ex. And then, you know, it just, it just never works, you know? And so it's, it's embarrassing, and you try to show it off to people, but it's cool, so you, you don't do it. But we have it now with Siri, and it's cool, and you can use it. She even has an attitude. Let me just talk about the speech processing for just a minute, because this is, um, this is probably the core here. So I just want to demonstrate for you what a monumental task this is. So I'm going to read to you a little passage, just a sentence, really, actually. And I just want you to do this simple task in your head. Count how many words there are. So I'm even going to tell you what it is so you know what to look for. It's the first sentence of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in Greenlandic. Inuit, tamar mi kin inen gorput na min ya sinas sa karlatik kasi gimilu at kinu sa karlatik pis na tiyata karlatik. Not even close. It, and it's just amazing. So, but but think about this for a second. Now imagine that you are a baby, just a fresh baby, hot off the press, like, <laughs> there's old babies, yeah, elsewhere. So, a new one. So, a new baby, and you're just sitting there, and your mom's talking to you in Greenlandic, and you're just like, what is this, okay? 
This is the miracle of language acquisition, that babies somehow over the course of two years are able to take that stream of sound, process it, chunk it into words, and assign meaning to it. Does that sound familiar? This is the task that we're asking computers to do. So if I should, you know, by that logic, I should be able to talk to you guys for a couple of hours in Greenlandic, and you know, you should just be able to talk back to me in it, right? <laughs> no, I mean, not no offense or anything, but it's not going to happen. You know, we, we struggle through four years of, you know, Spanish, and we don't get through like, mi amo, you know, Espanol. It's hard. <laughs> so it's hard. So it's not going to happen to us. But babies do it, and we're asking machines to do it. It's almost absurd when you think about it. But it's made possible by advances in linguistic theory, because with advances in all this abstract theory that people say is not practical, we're able to, dis we're able to describe the human language system with as much detail you know, as we need. And so we can describe almost in an infinite amount of sentences with just a few lines of code. And you know computers like very structured data, you know, just very concise and stuff like that. We can do that with advances in theory that take care of all these structures in the language. And sound, uh, sound, there is enormous variation of sound between one human and the other. So um, just like you know, our, our insides are different colors, so like my spleen is not the same exact like, shade of pink as yours is. Um, I'm sure you have a lovely spleen, sorry. It's not, I don't want to offend anyone here. It's the same thing with vowels. So you know, if ev there are no, no two people who speak the same vowels and consonants. Very similar, but not exactly the same. And so I'm from, the, I'm from Southern California, so my ah in cat is way different than the Midwestern cat. That's what you guys sound like to me, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> cat. So it's, it's not good. So we have, to, we have to account for that differences and the advances in phonological theory alongside advances in software engineering and programming uh, make this possible in what is called natural language processing. So we need linguistics to get to this point. Language technology is all around us. You know, we have it in our pockets, um, and it's just amazing to see what's happening. You know, within the last year, within the last year and this year, there's just so much interesting stuff coming out. Google Voice is now like really public, and you can click, you know, you can click the little microphone next to the bar and say pictures of cats, and it will give you one million pictures of cats. <laughs> Medical diagnoses. Te um, sorry, um, what's his name? Watson. Watson is. Uh, Watson is being retooled by IBM to work in the medical field. And so what's really amazing is that we should soon be able to have a machine where you can go up to it. You don't have to pay $70 copay to the doctor. You just talk to the machine and you say, hey, machine, I have you know, a cough right here and I have like, you know, an embarrassing rash on my thigh. And then it will be able to tell you, Brent, you have some horrible disease based on the computer. <laughs> so that's, that's medical technology made possible by linguistics. Facebook graph search is now enabled and you can enable it if you so please where you can just ask in a natural language query people who like crescendo core electropunk music. And it will give you back all your friends who like really indie hip music. So it'll, it'll, it'll do that for you. Why is this possible? Because of linguistics. Uh, we've had Wolfram Alpha for a while now, and the magic in Wolfram Alpha is in the back. So you type in Peru, and it will automatically harvest a beautiful info sheet that gives you everything you could, you know, wanted, ever wanted to know or didn't want to know uh, about Peru. And that's amazing. Why is this possible? Because of computational linguistics. Um, we have autocorrect, this horrible thing on Microsoft Word and in your phones and stuff like that that we all turn off because, you know, you're just typing a letter to your friend and you forget an F in their last name, Jefferson, and it says, oh, of course you meant to talk about scuba divers. So <laughs> just stop, like, don't even work. And why does that suck? Because no linguistics. They didn't do enough linguistics. They didn't take into account context sensitive, you know, what's the likelihood of talking about scuba divers when you're talking to your friends? None, like for me. So, so, you know, why is it horrible? And what is really exciting is, is Google released um, this really exciting video that we watched, Glass, Google Glass. And so you just, ha you just have a pair of glasses on your head with a camera and a computer and stuff, and people are doing really cool things like they do in normal life, like skydiving. And they're like, okay, Glass, take a video. And it will take a video. And it's real cool. And we want to be able to do that. We can do it. We have it because of language technology, because of linguistics. Language technology is all around us, changing the way that we interact with technology, and the, it's changing the world, really, because we have faster access, more natural ways to access all the information that's around the world. Um, and that's just remarkable when you think about it. With the miracle of language acquisition, we're trying to get machine language acquisition, and we can do it with linguistics. So the next time 
I'm at a party and somebody asked me, so what are you going to do with linguistics? I'm going to tell them, frankly, I expect to change the world. Thank you.